In this episode of Conducting Pills, we'll dive into the second part of Ravel's charming Margot's suite. Hi, I'm Jamie Regrigio, I'm a conductor and a composer, and welcome to this new episode of Conducting Pills, a series where we look into a classical piece or a part of it and outline its structure and phrasing, orchestration, and harmony, with the bonus technical tips for conductors. I want to take a second to thank all of my patrons and to remind you that on my Patreon page you can find the full episodes of Conducting Pills and the extra episodes tackling technical aspects on top of the live sessions and many other patron sparks. And now, let's begin! Lettre Honnête, in Fratres de Pagode, is the longest and most complex piece in which a mysterious central section is framed by two twin sections. The evocation of the East is obvious in the use of the pentatonic scale and in the various instrumental combinations, with the piccolo, the xylophone, the harp and the celesta. This evokes the oriental gamelan, which we mentioned in Debussy Prelude à la première du fond. The orchestra begins in pianissimo, the strings are divisi and Ravel calls for the double basses to lower their E string of a semitone in order to play later in the movement, a low D sharp. The rhythms chasing each other create a festive atmosphere. The piccolo joyfully enters with its melody in a pentatonic scale. Strums of the Teorbos are mimicked in a bridging section that sees the pizzicato of the strings along with descending quick figures of the woodwinds. The harp doubles the strings, while the glockenspiel doubles the flute and the clarinets. A single cymbal stroke adds yet another layer to this colorful moment. The second part of this A section is based on the same material picked up by the oboe. The quadruplets of 16 begin a game that at number 6 shows the same chromaticism we've already encountered at the end of the previous two movements. The glissando takes us back to the original material in a big crescendo which gradually involves the entire orchestra. And we land on the B section. A great combination of woodwinds, horns, celesta, harp and violas and cellos in pizzicato. The end of the musical idea is left to the temtem. At each repetition, the orchestration thins out. After a phrase built on the 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 bars, the same material is used with a different orchestration in a 3 plus 4 plus 3 bar phrase. Clarinet and Celesta play in the canon on the same motif. Notice how they both are in the lower register, creating a very peculiar sound. The music is transfigured by the entrance of the flute, playing a dreamy melody. At the end of which, the ominous motif returns in the clarinet, coupled with the violas. But wait, the sinister atmosphere is changed by the entrance of the celesta, overlapping with the piccolo theme of the beginning. We almost have not realized it, but we've returned to the A section in a shorter version. The bridge we saw earlier wakes us up completely from the weirdest dream we'd fallen into. And the oboe is back. The piece continues to the end as it was in the A section, closing with four final chords. Gracefully nostalgic, the waltz that accompanies Les Entretiens de la Belle et de la Bête is a tribute to Eric Satie and his Gymnopédie. It's a conversation at the distance between the melody of the beauty and the chromatic gurgling of the beast. In the end, the magical moment transforming the beast into a prince. The delicate waltz movement is provided by the harp and the flutes, replaced after four bars by the strings, while the clarinet sings on top. Mm -hmm. 
Vidi continues her melody with apparently uneven phrase structures of two bars and four bars, then two and three. There's very little change in the orchestration till the end of this first musical paragraph. At number two, we hear the beast in an ominous contrabassoon sustained by the pizzicatos of the cellos and double basses. The modus start the mix. The beauty inquires with her theme and the beast answers with his after three bars in the phrase structure of three plus two plus three. An animato poco a poco generates a certain excitement, but everything falls back almost immediately, with the two themes now completely overlapping one another. Another crescendo brings this waltz to a stop. The conclusion of the movement is the beautiful moment of transformation. The beast's theme from the low register and dark sound of the contrabassoon moves to the airy harmonics of the violin solo. Flute and harp play the beauty's motive while the cello underneath takes over the beast theme and the movement ends in a serene F major. This movement is clearly in one. One of the best things you can do here is to combine bars following the phrase structure. In the beginning, for instance, we have a 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 bar. This is one of the cases in which a pattern actually requires a meaning. In the final movement, Le Jardin Ferrique, the initial melody is progressively taken towards an apotheosis. It begins so simply in C major, just with the strings minus the double basses. Starting at number one, we see a first progression gradually increasing in intensity. It's a hint of that great and unique way that Ravel had to construct an enormous build-up with a few elements. In this case, the same two bars retreating on very sad E minor chords. The sadness is short, swept away by a gorgeous first violin solo. Two bars of that musical material move from one section to another, bridging into the final part of the movement. The line moves up in diminuendo, landing again on a C major, opening the phrase in a breathless way. Four bars later, the final crescendo begins reaching the climax and ending the piece with the feast of glissandos in the harp and the celesta, while the glockenspiel plays on top. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below the video and ring the bell so you will get notified every time a new video comes out. If you want to support the show monetarily, you can do so on my Patreon page and if you're interested in conducting technique, follow my Facebook group. All the links are in the description. Let me know in the comments what you think about this piece and if you have any suggestions for future videos and I look forward to seeing you next week with a new episode of Conducting Pills when we will start looking at Richard Strauss till Ordenspiegel. In the meanwhile, please continue to enjoy music and be well. Ciao! Tweet Fortissimo and Pianissimo on number three by not dropping the stroke on the second bar.